One of the most common ways of displaying quantitative data uh, is a histogram. So here are the parts of a histogram. You have the graph title, the height is the frequency. Should it look a lot like a bar graph? Uh, you have a quantitative variable instead of a categorical variable. Then you have intervals instead of categories. And you the uh, beginning number there that's right between the bars, that indicates the start of the next bar. So if I have an 8, it doesn't go in this bar, it goes in that bar. So let's go ahead and look at some more characteristics of histograms. First of all, the graph title tells what is measured, and the survey question is a good choice um, if you're trying to do that. Instead of categories, the bars represent intervals for, quantitative for a quantitative variable, all right? And the possible values could be discrete or continuous. Now, one thing, each interval must have the same width or it's going to be misleading. And the height of the bar is going to show either the frequency or the relative frequency, just like bar graphs. Because the values um, could be continuous, the bars touch instead of having gaps, all right? And the values in an interval can be anywhere in that interval. So if you see a bar spanning from 0 to 5, that doesn't mean all the values are 2.5 or that they're three. They could be any value uh, from zero up until just before five. All right, and then changing intervals, if you do that, it will change the shape of the graph. So histograms are usually constructed from a frequency table, and we're gonna go ahead and fill in this frequency table. I already started it by looking at the graph on top, and we'll guesstimate some of the frequencies here. So you can see here are my intervals from 0 to just uh, under 8, 8 to just under 16, then 16 to roughly 20, almost 24, 24 to almost 32, 32 to almost 40, and 40 to almost 48. So looking at the bar graph, which you have on your notes completed, you can see the frequency is 20, then 8, 4, and 1. And it doesn't say four exactly or one exactly, but I was eyeballing it. And you might be expected to do that on your AP exam. All right, so constructing a frequency table and histogram from data, how do we do it? It's, it's pretty easy to interpret, but it's a little trickier to make one. So first of all, one thing we need to know is our data size. So this is actually data from a survey I took a couple years ago of the number of pairs of shoes that my students own. And this was actually one of the students' questions. I thought, well, that's an interesting one. Um, our data set actually has a size 28. There are 28 responses here. And the funny part is I picked this before picking the activity to introduce this lesson. So to make the histogram, we need to know the range of the data, how far it's spread, uh, the number of intervals we're going to want, and the interval width. So to determine the range, we know the min and the max. In our case, the min is 1 and the max is 27. So we determine the range by subtracting the min from the max. 27 minus 1 is 26. So our range is 26. The desired number of intervals, the number of bars we're going to have, is anywhere between 5 and square root of n. You can go slightly up or down from square root of n. You've got some leeway, all right? And you might have to adjust it based on how we set our widths. So in our case, we have 28 data points. The square root of that is 5.3. So we could say, well, 5 intervals, we could do that, all right? And then we're going to have to figure out how wide the bar is. So the interval width is the range, how far apart the data is, divided by how many bars we want, all right? And we are going to, um, so here we have 26 over 5 equals 5.2. And you're always going to round that up to the next integer. So that would be 6. Now, that said, so if I was just going straight, I would have 5 intervals with a width of 6. Usually, interval widths are more popular when they're multiples of 5s or 10s. So if you choose a higher number, make sure that you have at least 5 intervals. So right now I have 5 intervals of 6, but I'd rather have a width of 5, all right? And then make up for it with 6 intervals. So I'm still having that product of 30 that gets me the, the range that I need. Now, you may start at the minimum or at a number slightly lower than the minimum to make the graph more readable. Again, multiples of 5 and 10 are quite popular. Now, the min is 1 in our data, so we might as well start at 0. That kind of makes more sense. 
And so if we look at, we have uh, widths of 5 and 6 of those intervals, that's 30. So we are going to cover all the data. Then we're going to calculate the beginning of the remaining interval. So what we do is we take the interval width and just add that to the previous interval start. Okay. So the second interval, the first interval starts at 0. The second interval will start at 5. And I keep going. When I get to that last interval of that starts at 25, well, I can just add the interval width to that again. But remember, it ends just below that value. It's going to end just before 30 because the interval after that, if we had one, would start at 30. So let's go ahead and organize our data. And I'll fill in our intervals first. So you can see here, starting at 0 to 5, or almost 5, 5 to almost 10, 10 to almost 15. Pretty straightforward, right? And then we can do tally marks, which is a great way to go through data because this can be rather tedious. I'm going to color code here to make it a little bit easier. So first of all, I have everything that is from 0 to just before 5. So I would count this 4, but I would not count the 5. And that's all that data right there. So how many tally marks do I have? I have 10 of them. So my frequency is 10. Now I'm going to count everything from 5 to just before 10. And that would be these right here. So you can see these are all single digits. And I have 8 of those. Then from 10 to 15, but not 15. Remember, it has to be less than 15. So these don't count. So I only have that one point right there, number uh, that 12, and a frequency of 1. From 15 to 20, less than 20, so I'm not going to count the 20s, but I will count the 15 and the 16. That's 3. And from 20 to 20, just before 25, there are three data points there. And I get 3 again. Then I have these three data points at the end, 25, 26, and 27. And that's a frequency table from the data. Again. Uh, I recommend using color if you're trying to organize it. It makes it much easier. Now, if you do use technology like a calculator and you just put in the list, you don't have to do this sort of preliminary work, hand work. All right, so I'll go ahead and construct the histogram. Remember, always put in your title. How many pairs of shoes do you own? That was the question we had on the survey. And my um, on the intervals, that represents the number of pairs of shoes. All right. And the frequency is how many students responded with that. So my first, uh, I'm going to go 0, 5, 10. Remember, we're going up all the way up to 30. And then I'm just going to go ahead and say the frequency, my highest frequency was 10. So I'm just going to go ahead and go up to 10. If it had been 12, I could have scaled it a little bit. So every one of these was like two units or something like that. But this one's pretty straightforward, so it just goes up to 10. So my first bar fills in completely. The second one was 8, and then 1, and then 3, 3, and 3. And there is your histogram. Actually not that hard to do. When we want to compare results for two different size sets of data, it's very important that we convert to a relative frequency. So our steps are almost identical. You still have the title and the, the thing that changes is right here. See how I say relative frequency? This part will stay the same. But this part is now going to be in percent. Now, when I calculated, the highest percent was about 36%. So I can just, I just need to get to like 40 or 50. Since there are 10 units here, I'm going to go all the way to 50%. And these are going in 5% increments. So there's my first bar for zero to five shoes and pairs of shoes, and it's about 36%. Then this one's about 29, uh, 4, 11, 11, and 11. And there is your relative frequency histogram. So it's very similar to a regular histogram. This, the only thing that's different is the scaling on the left. So it might be taller or shorter depending on how your graph works out.